Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm VA Winter. I am an indie author, professional beta reader, sensitivity reader, and I focus mostly on speculative fiction. And today we are doing another video in my On Writing Well series, and we are talking about passive versus active language slash voice. It's something that it's taken me a very long time to understand and to be able to identify in my own writing to understand what the difference actually is. So that's why partly why this video is towards the end of this series, even though these videos can be watched in any order whatsoever, you'll find them all on the playlist. But it's towards the end of the series, it's one of the later videos that I'm publishing because it's kind of moving a bit away from the foundations. And then some of the stuff we talked about earlier on in this series, so again, they should be in order on the playlist. They're more important. So what is passive and active language? And the best way I can do this is do it via examples. So passive language would be Liv was stabbed. Whereas an active version of that sentence would be Captain Black stabbed Liv. In the active version of the sentence, we know who is doing the action. A character is taking action rather than in the first sentence, in the passive version, the action is kind of happening by itself. It's something that's being done to the character by an unnamed power. We don't know what, who, or how Liv was stabbed. Passive sentences will always have a form of the to be verb, and this is a little bit technical. I will leave a link to a list of them down below with more information, but the words to look out for are be, am, is, are, was, were, been, and being. If you're writing in past tense, you will inherently have a lot of the word was and were in your narrative. That's understandable. And a bit like when we were discussing redundant words, words to cut, you sometimes need them. But when you're coming through with edits, particularly, this is where I sort of focus on this kind of thing is when I'm looking at line edits, it's about looking at the sentence and thinking whether you could rewrite it in a more active way. Sometimes you can't and that is fine. You don't need to eliminate every instance of was and were in a sentence. To change something from passive to active voice, generally you're thinking about moving the character or the person doing the action to the beginning of the sentence. And this is kind of one of the tricks in my brain I used to understand this. It makes the person or the character the focus of the sentence rather than the action or the target of the action. So instead of at sunrise the sounds of the town could be heard, write at sunrise live heard the sounds of the town. Here you're centering the person who can hear the sounds of the town grounding the reader in the action, in Liv's point of view, instead of having the reader hovering in the distance somewhere away from the narrative. Why is active language better? Active language is often seen as better in fiction because when you use active language, you're focusing on your point of view character taking action. Whereas if you're using passive language, the actions are always happening to your character and that doesn't help the reader feel like the character has agency, which is, often what we want, right? We want the character to have agency. We also want our writing to be clear. Like in that first sentence, Liv was stabbed. Well, who was she stabbed by? Why was she stabbed? Nobody knows. It's not clear. Whereas the second example, Captain Black stabbed Liv. We know who did the action, who it was done to, and what the action was. It makes it a more interesting sentence. So you want your reader to feel like the main character, the point of view character is taking action, is driving the narrative forward particularly after the midpoint, which is a whole structural thing we're not really gonna get into. You don't wanna feel like the plot is happening to the character, which is the impression passive language can give. So active language is also more engaging for the reader. Captain Black stabbed Liv, as I said, is a far more of an interesting sentence than Liv was stabbed. Even if you had context and wrote, Captain Black raised his dagger and Liv was stabbed, or Liv was stabbed, Captain Black laughed as he let go of the hilt, or something like that. Either way, you're not connecting Captain Black with the action of stabbing Liv. It's disconnected. Was it him that stabbed her, or someone, or something else? By using active language, you're telling the reader in no uncertain terms that Black is the one who stabbed Liv. There's a disconnect that happens, as I say, when you use passive language. It's also more associated with telling rather than showing, which most of the time you want to be showing the reader what's happening, not just telling them. For instance, Liv was sad is both passive voice and you're telling the reader Liv's emotion. Whereas if you wrote, Liv wiped away her tears, angry at herself for them, you're writing an active sentence and you're showing the reader the emotion that she said. Passive language is useful for things like news reports or in certain types of non-fiction. I'll leave a article linked down below, which does explain some uses for passive language. You should use passive language only in a sentence where you need to emphasize the target of the action or the action itself. So for instance, if you were writing some kind of mystery, 
and the point of Liv was stabbed is that Liv doesn't know who's stabbing her and you don't want the reader to know either, you might use a sentence like that. So that does cover the basics on active and passive language and I hope that was clear. If you do have any questions, as always, leave them below. It can be a really tricky thing to master and a really tricky thing to start to recognise in your own writing. But I will leave some further reading and resources down in the description box below. Questions, comments, suggestions, as I said, leave them down below in the comments. And if you would like some personalised feedback on your writing, you can use the link below to head to my contact form on my website where you can request that I take a look at 5,000 words, up to 5,000 words of your writing and give you some personalised feedback on what you're doing well and what you're not doing well, how you can improve, etc. And that's free. I don't charge for that because I enjoy doing it. You'll also find information about my beta reading services and my sensitivity reading services on my website down below as well. That just leaves me to say, if you liked the video, hit like. If you want to see more, subscribe and I'll see you next time with another video.